Hello viewers. In the previous video, we made this not so good looking flowchart or mind map for Amazon. While this should do the job for most of you starting to make your own website, it wouldn't be great if I continue teaching with this. So I recreated the same diagram digitally in order to make it look better. And now it looks something like this. So let's continue where we left off. We've been talking about the four IA system components for quite some time now, but how are they useful? The information we collected so far isn't useless, but it is still in a very crude form, meaning it will be ineffective if we present it as such. During large portions of my teaching career, I used to compare web design and development with the process of extracting gold from its ore. Let us compare information to a metal ore which we can easily collect it if we mine or dig deeper for it. Though collecting information in its crude form is possible by anyone, it requires a researcher's skill to extract the valuables from inside it. So to make this crude information more valuable, we are going to use these four components starting with the organization system first. The words I am looking for to define this phase is setting up an hierarchy. This hierarchy principle can be found everywhere in web design starting from the order in which we arrange our navigation links to the way content itself is arranged within a page. Let's take a look at some real-time websites to understand things better. Oh, why not start with another e-commerce site? I'm going to visit flipkart.com this time. This is an Indian e-commerce site that rivals Amazon. The reason I chose this website is I know a lot of you buy electronic gadgets through these online shopping sites. And hey, take a look at the first category they presented as a navigation link here. Coincidence? No. Research? Yes. Let's take a look at another example. A banner from Odafone India's homepage promoting Paytm, an e-wallet service. Take a look at this banner for a few seconds. What do you notice first? Well, here's my answer. It has hierarchy principle written all over it. They have designed this banner in such a way that the brand and the cashback offer is highlighted first. There is a small catch though. The offer is not for all. It's only for those who recharge above Rs. 149. But the size and weight of the font are purposely reduced to take away the priority from it so that the information about the cashback offer is more dominant. Let's go further. Notice this tiny text below that. In an even lighter color. There is a bigger catch this time. This offer is only available for first time users. But that's not what they want you to see at the beginning. That is why they have presented this in an insignificant way. And below that you find a nice bold and contrast button with a call to action recharge now. This is a clever usage of the hierarchy principle, isn't it? Now is our chance to use the same organization system in our information architecture to reorder our nodes based on hierarchy this time. Moving on, the next component is the labeling system. To label is to give something a name. To make you practically understand this concept, let us consider this video which contains 1500 words in its script. But if I had to describe it only using three words, I would say information architecture components. In a similar way, each navigation links title, each heading that is going to appear in the content and each caption that is going to appear along with images or tables has to be labeled. Keep in mind that the labels you choose should be very simple to understand and follow. Then we move on to a much broader but interesting component known as the navigation system. Navigation is the user's act of moving from one place to another within the site or app. According to Google's material design, there are three types of navigation. Lateral navigation, forward navigation and reverse navigation. Lateral navigation is where 
you move between items of similar hierarchy or related items in a set. For example, let us consider the movement of a user in between items in a nav drawer. Or let us say the navigation of a user from one tab to another. You might also see this lateral navigation when the user moves from one section to another using the bottom navigation bar. Forward navigation is when a user moves from items that are higher in the hierarchy to an item that is lower in the hierarchy. There are three types of forward navigation. Downward, sequential and direct. Downward navigation is when you move from a parent screen to a child screen to access deeper content. For example, finding a desired phone model by traversing through different categories such as brand, specification, price, etc. Sequential navigation is when you move between different screens step by step in order to complete a process. A checkout process is an example. In direct navigation, the user jumps directly from a screen that is higher up in the hierarchy to the target screen, skipping a few pages in between through techniques such as searching. Of the three major navigation types, the final one is reverse navigation. As the name suggests, it is when a user moves in the reverse direction from a page lower in the hierarchy to a page that is higher. There are two types in this as well. Upward navigation, when you travel from a child node to the parent and reverse chronological navigation when you travel back to pages in the same but reverse order in which you visited each of them. So we are going to use these navigation types to determine which navigation is suitable for each section in our IA. Finally, we have the search system that tells our IA what type of search should be implemented in our site or app to prevent users from getting lost inside the sea of pages that we are going to develop. This includes having a search bar, a filter to exclude items that do not interest our users, and sorting systems to arrange our list of items based on certain categories such as price, rating, etc. Implementing all these systems into our previous model, the refined IA looks something like this. Now I don't mean to say this is how every web developer creates his IA, nor this is perfect. But it has proven to be effective in my experience and I thought I'll share the same with you. So after three videos, we have finally come to the end of our research phase. If you want a copy of this file for reference for the task you've been doing, the link is in the description below. As I told you before, this isn't the only way to do it and you can research as deeper as you want. In our next video, we'll talk about the ingredients that are required to make our website. We are only a few videos away from getting our hands dirty and making our own prototype for a website. Until then, stay tuned, give us a like to show your appreciation that you learned something new, add this video to your learning playlist, subscribe to the channel for future videos and keep that bell icon clicked to view them as soon as we publish new videos. Also share this channel to your friends who is looking to become a developer someday. See you next time.